Hello and welcome. My name is Patrick Wright and I'm delighted to be making this announcement as Chair of the British Academy Book Prize for Global Cultural Understanding. The British Academy is the United Kingdom's National Academy for the Humanities and Social Sciences. We exist to encourage originality and excellence in these fields. The shortlisted books for this year's prize provide a perfect illustration of the importance of the humanities and social sciences and how they can help us to understand and possibly also to improve the world we live in. As a fellow of the British Academy, I have the great pleasure of celebrating these books and also of announcing this year's winner. Our International Book Prize grants £25,000 to the winner and the shortlist for this year contains four books on very different topics. We have a book about the lasting legacy and also the defeat of the civil rights movement in America and another about the modern nation state and its responsibility for the creation of permanent minorities around the world. We have a study of the age of revolution and empire as viewed from the small seas of the global south and another that investigates the post-human landscapes that are all too characteristic of our depleted and increasingly damaged planet. Before going any further, I would like to give special thanks to the judges who have spent this year sifting through a huge number of submitted books. They have, as ever, been considerate in their reading and, as I'm sure you'll agree, wise in their judgments. The judges this year are Madawi al-Rashid, Professor of Social Anthropology at the London School of Economics, Catherine Hall, Professor of Modern British History at University College London, Fatima Manji, journalist, author and presenter of Channel 4 News, and Philip Sands QC, a writer and professor of laws at University College London. With their help, we'll now give you a sense of the four outstanding titles shortlisted for the 2021 British Academy Book Prize for Global Cultural Understanding. Neither settler nor native, the making and unmaking of permanent minorities by prominent Ugandan scholar Mahmoud Mamdani. This is an excellent analysis of the ongoing crisis of the post-colonial nation state, namely the bloodshed that followed the independence of several states. As the age of colonialism came to a draw, the new states were plagued by genocide, discrimination and expulsion of people who were turned into minorities. Neither settler nor native takes us back to 1492 and the discovery of the Americas, an historical moment associated in our minds with exploration and hope. But as the discovery of the Americas unfolded, it led to the first genocide against Native Americans. Mamdani's book moves between times and spaces, from North America to Europe and Nazi Germany, to the Middle East and Africa, where ethnic and religious differences become problematic. It deserves to be read by those who are baffled by how the colonial era and the new nation states generated their own repression, genocide, and exclusion. Thinking about a world in which terrible damage has been done, mostly by humans, and of the many places that have been almost entirely abandoned by people, Flynn has spent time in a whole variety of these islands of abandonment, as she calls them. The catastrophe at Chernobyl is all too familiar, but she finds amidst the devastation the people who have returned to their homes and are trying to make a life out of the wreckage. Flynn's descriptions of the plants that managed to survive in these poisoned and dangerous places are very moving. Verdun, for example, the site of the longest battle of World War I, in which an estimated 300,000 men died. The landscape was annihilated, but plants have survived. Here one feels, as she puts it, the astonishing fortune of living in such a vast and endlessly forgiving world. It is this which makes the book one of hope rather than of despair. Cal Flynn has given us a story of redemption, how we might yet be able to live with climate change. This is a book to give us hope in dark times. Waves Across the South makes you think about a period of history many of us think we're familiar with in a totally different way. 
It's set in the age of revolution, so the time span in which we see the French, American and Haitian revolutions. But instead of telling us about the Atlantic and Europe, the story centres around the Pacific and Indian Oceans and the peoples who live in the lands located in those oceans. Essentially, it turns the world upside down. It says, this is what history looks like when you view it from a different location, an alternative lens. And along the way, we meet Maori map makers. We hear about the political activities of Parsi shipbuilders from Bombay and their travels to visit Parliament in London. And all of these compelling stories are backed up by meticulous research. There's a fantastic use of archives. And it's the oceans, the seas, the waves that bring together all these tales, creating a truly powerful and new history of revolutions and empires. I loved Eddie Glaude's Begin Again. James Baldwin is in many ways a man for the moment. In a time of Black Lives Matter, we've come back to think about our past, our colonial history, enslavement, matters of race and of identity. And the beauty of this book is it's not just that it's deeply personal, but that it also is extraordinarily scholarly. You're in the hands of a writer who feels and knows and understands the subject that he is addressing. And so there is the known James Baldwin kinds of stories that I was already familiar with, but then the deeply intimate and personal insights. And you're just left with this feeling of the extraordinary modernity and relevance and the immense power of James Baldwin. It's a simply wonderful book. Given a short list like that, well, you may not be surprised to hear that we judges had considerable difficulty deciding on the final winner. Before I announce our decision, may I offer on behalf of the British Academy and my fellow judges, sincere thanks to our four authors for writing such interesting, engaging and significant books. I would encourage you to read all of them. However, there can only be one winner. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the 2021 British Academy Book Prize for Global Cultural Understanding is Waves Across the South, A New History of Revolution and Empire by Sujit Sivasundaram. Thank you so very much to the jurors and to everyone at the British Academy. I have been moved and challenged in reading the books of Eddie S. Claude, Cal Finn and Mahmoud Mandani, and it was an honour to be shortlisted next to them. As we face our futures, we need there to be space for modes of solidarity across nations and peoples in the Global South. My wish is that this book is read and critiqued in such an exchange. I also hope that in a small way, it highlights the need to challenge dominant modes of writing, which too easily universalize, or which stick too closely to definitions of national cultural and area-based research. The book might also show that it's at least possible for a Sri Lankan based in Britain, for instance, to write on Tonga. In other words, the future of global cultural understanding requires that research is open to all and that it arises from many unexpected starting points and that we don't only research our own histories. The book is also perhaps a little act of uncancelling. The story it tells was immediately cancelled, I argue, by propagandist imperial writers of the 19th century. The discourses of our present moment of debate need to be set within a long history of cultural war if we are now to generate understanding. More personally, today happens to be the 100th birthday of my grandmother, Manora Mabai Muttakrishna. I dedicate this prize to her memory. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for this announcement and warm congratulations once again to Sujit Siva Sundaram for his book Waves Across the South, A New History of Revolution and Empire. Please visit our website, which is www.thebritishacademy.ac.uk, 
where you'll be able to find more information about this prize, about the shortlisted books and about previous winners, and where we will quite soon be posting information about how to enter books for next year's award. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.